important thing here, guys, is that I keep my promises. Oh, no, there's another sticker up there. All right, that's good enough for me. All right, today, I didn't want to do this last episode because it was getting kind of lengthy, but mentioning the last episode, I wanted to thank you guys for all the positive feedback. Wow, you guys blew me away. I appreciate it. It's more in my, um, it's more in my field, my career field, doing that stuff. So it was kind of refreshing to put something out there where I actually know what I'm talking about <laughs> and what I'm doing. And uh, I knew it was like a solid plan, and I knew it would work. It was just, it was nice to just kind of share that part of my uh, background with you guys. But I just wanted to say thank you for all the positive feedback and and the good ideas too. I had an I, I had somebody say something about a, a linear encoder for the height of the bandsaw. That'd be cool. Um, ways to keep the coil clean. I mean, just a bunch of cool feedback. So. And um, a lot of you thanked me for the Arduino code itself and just putting it out there. So absolutely, take it, do something with it, you know? Uh, if you make it better, let me know. I can check out your code. So anyway, today we are going to set up the steps on this thing and we're going to test it out. Just so you guys know, long term here, um, just the long term goal. We are about to get up to the house site to dig out the footers for our foundation of the house. But before we do that, we're gonna um, we're gonna mill a lumber package for a building that we're calling the office. The office is going to be an office. It's also going to house our electric coming from the solar, and it's gonna house our water supply that we pump up to the house. We'll get more into that later. But what we, Meg and I thought would be a good use of time is mill the lumber, get it in the kiln, get the dry drying process going and then we'll get up to the house site and start digging out the footers, pour the footers, get all that done. So it's gonna be a back and forth thing. We're gonna to try to keep that kiln full, but in between the time when it is drying, we're going to um, do other tasks, like construction on a different structure. <music> day in Virginia right yeah we're doing a whole bunch of stuff today we're checking the moisture level we haven't done this yet we're checking the moisture level in the kiln you high tech high tech hold the door shut system you could tell Meg's serious today with the gloves outside her back pocket <laughs> all right we still have yet to have a solution to keeping the door shut all how right. hot is it in there Meg uh, that's Holy hot. Holy cow. Yeah. It's hot. All right, today we're going to get the walnut out of here. It's split a little bit, but that's fine. We just cut slabs. Walnut's coming out, um, and this whole stack here is coming out. We have over 100 1x6s of pine, and we're going to bring them up to the house site. That's, that's kind of cool, huh, Meg? Going up to the house site with them? Yeah. All right, what do you got, Meg? All right cheap moisture meter okay i found out that you need to do this first when you turn it on you need to what do you mean 
do that because if you don't like, that, like register it, it? I, yeah, I think it does something like that because Turn if you don't screen. do it, it doesn't do anything. So yeah. do that. Okay. Now this one's got low, mid, high. Mode is wood or what's the other mode? Building. Building. Okay. I don't know. Let's that. keep it on wood. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. You ready? Uh, sure. Go, go to the middle. High. It's still high. 20 point. Oh, it's going down as we speak. <laughs> hey, just for uh, giggles. Well, actually, 19.9 is acceptable. Let's go to the other side. Let's see if the ones on the other side are. Because this is the dark side. Let's just see if there's a difference. Go a few levels down. over here okay I mean it's good enough as far as I'm concerned because these are just form boards for the uh, for the concrete so good test just curious. that's a top row okay so go way down here to the first ones we did wow that's great yeah, we just must have picked a that one's high. kind of wet cow. one. Now why is that one so wet? I don't know. It actually feels a little damp. I'm surprised there's such a variance. Yeah. There's a nest in here. Is there really? Yeah. Wow, it's a mouse nest. Something's building a nest. Well, we'll evict them quickly. All right, so I would say if these things were given maybe another week, they would get down to the 15% range. We're shooting for 15 on the poplar, not 19. 19 is the threshold. So it goes high after 16%. Yeah, that one board. That's weird. You know what it probably is? I bet you that's an outside board. I see the can't, or the um, bark. Yeah. Okay. Now some of them read high, but that's acceptable. Anything under 19% is acceptable. Yeah. But let me explain something, guys. So let's go over to an actual log. So here's a piece of loblolly pine. That's what all of this is, actually. And you can see the sap ring here, okay, outward. The tree sends most of its moisture up from the outside. I mean, the tree starts in the middle, and it grows out and out and out with its growth rings. It just kind of, like, leaves this wood behind. That's why a lot of times trees will rot from the inside out because this is just such old wood it's not really using it to send moisture up to the branches and all that stuff so when you cut on a mill and say your board comes from like this region that moisture content is going to be a lot higher than if you just cut a board from like the the middle area here and check its moisture content so Keep that in mind also, like your drip on the sawmill blade, you might not even need anything on the outside cuts. On the inside, you're gonna need it, but the outside is probably wet enough to keep that blade nice and cool. So you milled this yesterday? Yeah. Look at this. Yep, that's the same wood. I don't know if you guys could read it. It's 24 and a half. Meg. Yeah. Let's get this stack of lumber up on top of which mountain? Over there. Over on the other side. Yeah. Um, we're going to do that. But first, I don't want Meg walking like a half a mile. Let's, uh, let's get her mode of transportation up and running. Willie's foot's sad. <laughs> All right, guys. We got a bleeder. I think it's the valve stem. I don't think I replaced this one when I put these tires on it, but... You leave it for more than a few days, it goes flat. So we're gonna try the valve stem. Um, and then we'll fill it up, we'll check with some soapy water. We're gonna have Meg do this one. Let's lift it up. Hey, let's use the, this thing weighs like a thousand pounds, this little guy, this Cushman. Let's lift it up with just the, the fork I fixed. Yeah, I think it's fine, huh Meg? Let's add another 200 pounds. I think it's a fine fix. 
fix is still holding for those of you who have watched me fix the forks. We're good, we're gonna put it to an even stronger test picking up that pile of lumber. If the dogs don't kill themselves. What are you guys doing? You ready to go for a run soon? Not yet, not yet, Carmi. Squeeze the trigger. There you go. Stubborn. Where's my little magnet dish? Come on, these are the things I get for you. Let's put them right there on the lily. <laughs> Alright, get that thing off of there. Alright. All right. Why do we have to put it up? We gotta break the bead real quick. We're gonna use that. Get in there. Hop in Rambo. Just let it down gently, huh? And then back up so the forks are out of the bottom. Keep going. Let's just leave it like that. Turn the machine off. That works even better, guys, if you have a, uh, like a smooth bucket on there, not these, you know, flimsy forks. All right, Meg, let's go, uh, let's get this, let's get this valve stem off of here. All right, unscrew that. That's, you could save that because we lose those all the time. Now do I just pull? Yeah, you pull the heck out of it. You think you're gonna break it pretty much. I usually just pull back on it. I don't do the leverage thing. <laughs> There's like not enough leverage. Well then just stand up and pull back on it. Mick, stand up. I'm more comfortable like this. Okay. <laughs> you want to pull straight out. You're pulling at an angle, making it harder. <clears throat> Good. Keep going. <laughs> Can we cut it? I guess. I'm gonna be a wuss. What's this? <laughs> Looks like it'll work. I never thought about cutting one. <laughs> I'm dead serious. <laughs> all right, see all this dirt? That's we're gonna have an issue there. Let's get a paper towel. Let's get that um, that lip nice and clean with some uh, cleaner. This is junk, right? Yeah, junk. Get in there, Nick. Doesn't like tire air just smell bad? It smells like rubber. It's just gross. Tip for you. Meg. What? We need a little drop of soap. Oh, yeah? You're gonna want to drop a soap. Can you go just squirt your finger with some Dawn? Dawn's the way to go, Meg. Could have been back already. Look, she's trying her hardest not to go in the camper. Come on, Meg. You're not gonna find soap in the shed. Oh, 
Oh, wait, are you getting the laundry detergent? Ooh, that's a better idea. <laughs> Get out of here, B. Got it? Yeah. Wait, does that contain OxyClean? Yes. Okay. Is that Arm & Hammer? Yeah. Alright, good. I like the Arm & Hammer laundry detergent. Good price. Good quality. Plus, right. I like their logo. Straight. Yep, keep it straight. Bingo. Do a little twisty. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep tightening it and just do a little, little twist rooney There you go. Better. That'll seat better. Good. Now I can't get it done. You know what we should do too? We should really wipe down the rim here because I could feel some. Get some of my jeans. No, you don't want paper towel. Here. I cut up a pair of jeans. Can we rename the skid steer or the track loader? Can we rename it Taco? Taco? Yeah. See if it sticks. Curl up. All right, drop them down. Good. That's my girl. Get it off. Oh. All right. I meant like hold hold it on. No, 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 no. Now, yeah, once you get friction like that, just, you're good. Need to be higher or you good? Uh, that's good. All right. I taught Claire and Autumn how to do the air pressure checking. Now Meg's uh, replacing valve stems. We're gonna be okay here on our little mountain. Yeah. You're right. I think so, John. Sweet. Look at this thing, guys. I picked this up from a neighbor that was just like, hey, you want this? I said, sure, why not? I mean, I'm sure the gauge is going to work fine, you know, but anyway, I thought I'd tinker with this. I don't even know if it holds pressure or what, but, oh, that's cool. When you see it says Sears Roebuck, it really means it's old. All right. Okay. They are using horsepower, not donkey power. So that's a little more modern. What is um, this for? That's for sticking in a log and grabbing it. Look, John, look at those welds. Glob, Glob it, it in there. <laughs> And uh, it came with some other tools too. We got one of these. We got. I don't know what this does. I'm probably gonna have a field day of comments here. Um, this is a vulcanizer. This is a chisel, or is this like just like a little metal smithing? Hammer? I know what this is. What's that, Meg? That's a. a... Oh, what is it called? Well, why don't you read it? Is read it, it Crawford? Read it. Crosby, isn't yeah, it Crosby? Yeah. Crosby clamp, yeah. Where is it? It's not it's on here. It's actually a Crosby. Is it on here? Yeah, it says it on there. It says China. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Forget about China. Maybe this isn't the one I saw. Maybe I have a different one in there that's an actual Crosby clamp. But, These yeah. look like they would cut something. This is my, uh, my little friend down the road. Um, she's just getting rid of stuff. Look at this old winch. She gave me this old winch. Look at this thing. That's cool. You didn't show me that. Yeah, I mean, guys, what if I actually mounted this on my trailer? 
and you know, I go, I go pick something up at like supply place, and like I was like, hold on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It works great. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, can't you see this like being in the kid's fort? Right? And they're raising stuff up with a bucket with it and stuff. That must be some kind of ratchet. Yeah. Yeah, it's for uh, ratcheting chains. Oh, here it is. This must be the... That's the Crosby coin. Genuine Crosby. Boom. Nice. That's cool. Third yeah. hand. That's Old so tools good. are so cool. Yep. And then um, she comes out with this. We got some 30 odd sixes, some 30 30 some 22 longs in there. Just a mixture of things. Ooh, it looks like a 223 is in there. Yeah, found some of these on the property. Old mall. I want to show this one off. But I thought it'd be really cool, guys. Just like, you know, when I do get time one day, I'm not saying anytime soon, take like old axes and mauls and things like that and use some of the ash wood that I have extra and just make some really nice handles for them and have a collection of them. Thought it'd be cool. Um, and she's like, John, what is this thing? I was like, I have no idea. So. I was like, there's something in there. Look at this thing. This is old school. Look at these bits, guys. Um, well, that's not really exciting. This one is, though. Um, hold on. I'm getting there. There. I mean, that was an indicator. I was like, oh, that's a Phillips bit. So then I found my way around this way, and it clicks into here like this. Like, this is a this is an old school ratcheting screwdriver. And uh, I think this is just going to go in the tools collection. I'm not going to actually, I don't know if I'll use it or not, but. But you could keep it at a right angle and give yourself some, I guess, some leverage or, or torque. Um, middle is, yeah, look at that. That's reverse, here's forward. Isn't that cool? I don't know what kind this is, but. Thought it was interesting. We've all seen these. Got one of those, those are handy. Broken pipe wrench. I just took this for the metal. I mean, who knows what you need this stuff for, right? But anyway, she You'll said, find a use. Got a turnbuckle here. I mean, just all sorts of good stuff. It was cool. And uh, I got another whole shed of hers to go through if, if I want to, so. All right, but anyway, this is a, this is an air compressor. I thought it was cool it ran on a pulley like this. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. If I ever tinker with this, I'll let you guys know, bring you into it, but I'm sure some of you watching this channel have had this exact air compressor. <laughs> but it's an electric motor. If anything, if the motor's good and the compressor's uh, bad, at least we could take off this pulley system and the motor, we could salvage that for something if we don't hold pressure here, but we'll see how it works. Anyway, not going to do any of this right now. Oh, last thing. Check this out. What do we got here? A compact camp stove. Model 425F. Ugh. This thing is pretty cool. Little windshield here. There was a little furry friend living in here at one point. Um, I don't know where these clamp onto. I guess they go through here or something. But anyway, it's got... Um, that, this is like a... It's not gasoline, but it's like a clean gasoline. The, the fuel that it takes, it doesn't take um, propane like the Coleman's do these days. It opens up, and this is the fuel tank. Um, it's not denature alcohol, it's, it's some kind of like, a, some kind of gasoline. That, like a distilled gasoline or something like that. But anyway, it goes, it goes through here. There's that all. Yeah, and it holds the fuel tank, but there, there's fuel in here. And it's a little two burner grill, or a two burner stove top. Pretty cool when the zombies show up. Remember we did that math, guys? We tried to figure out how much bigger to cut the lumber uh, so we could get to our, I guess, our final desired dimension. So we wanted six. We cut it at about like 6.5. We looked up the species and we looked up the uh, shrinkage rate on the tangential factor. We wanted six, right? Cut them at 6.5. Look at that. 
it worked. Look at this one. Yep. See the gap in between? These were these were stacked right on each other. Yep. So that's how much they've shrunk. Some are still a little big, like they're not all perfect like that, but for the most part, if anything, they're a little bit bigger. This one, I mean, I've checked a, a, quite a few of them and they're all six on the nose. Pretty that's cool. Good. Yeah. It's our plan, Meg. All right, this is gonna seem strange. It's gonna seem stupid, right? Beca because we, we designed the doors and we designed everything so we could take the skid steer with the forks and come in here and pick up the whole stack. Yeah, because we raised it up. But we also didn't think about how these stickers, they took a lot of wood and a lot of time to mill. Mm -hmm. And if we leave them with the stack, we have to cut more of them mm -hmm. and we will have to keep doing that over and over. So our plan now is going to take a little bit more time, but it's also saving us time. So we are going to unstack this board by board and restack it without the stickers so we can use the stickers again. Yeah, we can't, this dimension is too long to just grab with the uh, track loader and get it out of here. Yeah, like the first four rows. Yeah, so we gotta undo these by hand. Then we're gonna grab the entire stack of what's left over, get it out of the kiln so it's a little easier. We can just unstack it and stack it on. We got two pallets sitting out here and the forks fit between them. We're gonna ratchet tie them together so we have a nice sturdy pile. Anyway, it'll make sense.
don't need to do that. Oh. All right, so I'm driving Willie. Yeah, we'll meet you guys at the house site. All right guys, we are, there's the shed. Meg is painting it by the way, because we used barn and fence paint on it and it was horrible. We're never doing that again. We got good paint. Meg's painting it again. So I'm up over here. The, the apple tree is right there and it is in full bloom and every bee in the world is over there right now. The dogwood is behind it right there. Um, we got some other fruit trees over there that we put in the ground recently too. But anyway, I wanted to talk about these. These are pawpaws. See a little flower right there? Kind of looks like an upside down um, tulip. Or maybe it looks like an apple from the top, right? All right, so these little flowers are from a pawpaw tree. And there's a good representation of a new one and one that's actually taking a pollinator. And then they ultimately just kind of turn darker and darker and, and fall off the tree. So here's some new ones behind me here. All right, there's, there's more. There's a lot in this area. I'm getting to my point here in a second. My point is these need to be pollinated, but I never, it, it never seems to work out. I got some trash. It's here for a reason. Pawpaws get pollinated by flies, not bees. If they did get bee pollinators, they'd be in stiff competition because the apple tree is attracting everything in the world. But if you look up, look at all of these little flowers and I rarely ever get a fruit on these trees. And I'm trying really hard this year to get some fruit or get these guys pollinated so they produce fruit. So there's another bigger one back there. Um, where else? There, there's more, There, you know, I see a bunch of a bunch of their flowers all I mean you could see but anyway I got more of them down there we'll go down there in a second but um, I'm gonna try this approach the other day I was out here and I took a q-tip and I went in here and I went to the next tree and did the q-tip and, and all that stuff just trying to pollinate them but then I got the idea of just placing the trash can there I got that idea we used to stay at a campground um, and they have a pawpaw tree and that's where I learned about them and it was next to the dumpster and the thing just put off so much fruit every single year so i'm going to try that approach and see how it goes let me go show you down by the spring real quick we are right underneath this pawpaw tree see the bark on it it's kind of smooth it looks similar to like a beech tree almost there's no pronounced bark like on a like on a pine tree like actually like that old uh, locust tree right there um but anyway, this is a pawpaw, and the one next to it here is also. And if you look up, you'll see those uh, distinctive maroonish flowers. And I think, so I get one or two fruits on this tree. And I'm actually standing here and have some flies buzzing around me. And I think the flies are from this water source, just kind of like a stagnant source. I'm trying this year. I'm going to let you guys know if the fly pollination with the trash can nearby works out.
of loblolly pine up here I'm gonna cut up for two by fours we have a bunch sitting over here in the shed or in the kiln I keep calling it the shed but I got some in the kiln here that I started on yesterday on the right side I took out the walnut we got two by fours going here and I got two by sixes and probably I'm gonna do some two by eights here hopefully I can make this whole lumber package fit all together in the mill and dry it all at once Someone's flying by. Sounds like a helicopter. It's right over us. It's gotta be for hospitals or something. We don't get them, get them often, but anyway. All right, um, so I got the track loader out here. We got a log up there. And I wanted to talk to you real quick about this control box. Um, a lot of you had questions about the battery. They're like, why don't you why don't you just power everything from here and the motor off of that 12 volt battery? Well, I would need twice the amperage that I'm running now because this is a 24 volt system. Um, the second thing is I would be, I'd be using more than I was generating. This thing doesn't have a big alternator and it's mainly designed. It'll trickle charge this battery here just so that it could start up again shortly. Um, if I was asking all of this to run off that battery too, I'm probably going to end up with a dead battery and a burned out alternator, and I don't want that. So I'm going to keep the function separate and just have the 24 volt power supply over here. Um, just keep everything separate. That's the way I'd like it. You can, if you want to try it, uh, go for it. But I really think you're going to, you'd need a bigger battery and probably a bigger alternator to do that. So. All right, this thing, I just turned it on at the solar kiln. So let's position this saw blade and let's get to work. I need some water too. Now, if I cut that off, it's going to be waste, like realistically. So I'm actually going to measure where I'm at. Where's my little friend? Top of the log is 25. I don't know where my little white bar went. All right, 25 and 25. So I'm actually going to... Like right now I'm about here and that's not very useful, but I'm cutting two by fours here. If I actually come down so that, you know, I get to like four inches or so, I'm actually, it's actually, what is it? Three and 13 16. So if I get it down to like four and a half or so and make that cut, then I could stand this one upright and make some, make some better cuts. And I think that's the approach I'm going to, I'm going to take with this log. Should I? I feel like I'd get more out of it. That way I'd have some boards going this way, and then I could use the rest of this to get a couple rows of two by fours that way. Nice small pith, that's good. This was a nice tree. So the question is, should I do this or not? Yeah, I'm gonna do it.
All right, so let's check out the computer now on the mill. I just, uh, so this thickness is good for two by fours. I got a second one over there and then I got an, a slab. Well, I just have like a first cut piece over there that it, it was a very large peat log to start out with. So I brought the blade up as high as I can and I wound up with quite a chunk coming off of it and I was wondering how I was gonna process it and I got an idea here. Let's get this one up there and let's go grab that one and then we'll make a lot of two by fours. Let's go. to a point where we could start making some lumber guys so I just got two identical pieces here as far as the width this width is like 3 and 13 16 or something like that uh, that's the radial shrinkage we're allowing to make a nice uh, 2 by 4 that's the 4 inch dimension so I got them side by side so every log we you know we'll get two boards per pass um, let's cut off the waste first but so we're gonna pass this by we're gonna test out the accuracy of the computer um, yeah, let's do it. Show you the uh, clockwork uh, where this thing comes into play. All right, first thing we're gonna do is zero this out. Zero, we got a green light. When I go cut, I'm gonna get these off, pull the saw back, and then we're gonna hit next. It's gonna drop down for the inch and a half we need for the for the two by four. But the inch and a half, it's like an inch and, I don't know, inch and 13 sixteenths or, I, what the hell is it? It's an inch and nine sixteenths actually, because we calculated the shrinkage. Okay, let's do this. again so it's going to take me past that first line and then to the second one we can leave the boards right there
can only get two passes before it starts interfering with up here mm -hmm. when you're doing two buys, which isn't a big deal. So maybe. So you could put like, you could probably fit about five of these side by side and get 10 boards for every time you gotta move everything. If you set it up correctly, prepare everything correctly. Right, Mick? Mmm. Mmm. Look at that board. Look how pretty. Looks great. Nice? Yeah. Looks like the blade's getting a little dull. We're making lumber now, baby. Yeah, you gotta bring down your uh, thing. You didn't check the consistency. It's right. Yeah, it does. It looks right. I mean, how could it be wrong? That's no choice. The computer's doing it. <laughs> it's correct. At this point, you could reset your zero. Since I just removed everything, the blade right there is at zero. So tell it it's at zero. That reestablishes its safe point, so it doesn't have to go the one, two, three that we already cut. Now it thinks of that as the top, we'll hit next, and it goes down. So John, what's the situation with the power cord? Uh, well, I had trouble not with that, but with something else. I thought it might have been the power cord, but I guess I could talk about that. And this is going to be super quick, so I was getting interruption, um, power interruption, but well, that's what I thought, but I was really just getting uh, electronic noise. So what I did, a lot of people called debouncing. Um, it so basically what I said was, if you push a button, tell the computer to start counting to 50. Now we're talking microseconds here. There's a million microseconds in one second. In the computer world, you can't press a button fast and that fast, like under 50 microseconds. You just can't do it as a human being. So. I tell the computer, when you think a button's pressed, count to 50. And when you get to 50, check, is that button still pressed? If it is, then go ahead and fire off your command. Now, as a human being, it doesn't seem like there's a delay at all, but the computer just counted up to 50 to ensure that the button was still pressed after that 50 count. And if it is, then do the action I request you to do. So that's what I did, and it has fixed the problem. But I was getting, the Arduino kept like flashing at zero light at me, the LED, which meant it was kind of like getting unplugged and plugged back in, or like there was an interruption there somewhere. And I think it was just multiple buttons were being pressed all at the same time because of uh, electronic noise from the vibration on the mill and everything. So I corrected it, that's how I did it. So you have the power cord that we did, the yellow one unplugged, and you have this green one plugged in because yeah. you thought that was the problem, but it wasn't. It's not the problem. So you're gonna hook that back up? I'm gonna hook it back up, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, qu quite the uh, sawdust pile here. Yeah. Yeah. There's but this works too, guys. Um, just, you know, do a hard wire connection. And just go all the way and let it hang. And I actually just tapped into the positive and negative on this power supply here. Or on this cord. But that works too. We're still just testing things out, so. Cool. It's a good way to do it. Is right above the kiln and the mill here. I grabbed the MIG and uh, we're looking for something. I got my mower here. I'll tell you what we're looking for. I was cutting uh, and I saw this and I immediately knew what it was. Can anybody guess? I'll give you another hint. Give you another hint. I marked it with a stick. Look at that. That's clue number two. It's a morel mushroom or dry land fish. I did not expect it to be right in the middle of the lawn here. Man. Guys, you don't understand. I just took a walk yesterday for like an hour and 20 minutes into the woods all around the property. I only walked like half the property. 
And I was looking and looking and looking. I didn't find any. And I just cut the grass. I hit one and I hit two. So now I, I only have that much grass left to the right there. I gotta keep an eye out. Meg, we're gonna have to look. There's another mushroom there, but it's not around. Where? Right here? Mm. <sighs> no. That's a some kind of guild mushroom. All right, we're gonna keep looking. If we find some, we'll let you know, guys. Mm. This isn't fair. <laughs> Meg found another one, guys. A few days later, look at him. He's a little past. Yeah, I would just leave that one. Oh. I'll spread more spores. Yeah, sure. Look at him. I don't know what she's doing to me. We're gonna take a little walk in the woods here. That's how we're gonna start our morning, just looking in the woods. Did you? you know, I'm starting to think that there's like a belt. You know what I mean by that? Like an altitude belt, and it's very like, once you find one, you gotta stay like within that altitude. Cause we're right, like where I found the other ones in the lawn. And the other one Meg found the other day was right here. Oddly, it's by this uh, pine tree. I don't know what kind of pine tree that is, but I've seen online other people finding them in pine needles too. I don't know. I mean, there it is. Huh. It's right next to Maddie there. We got to teach Maddie how to find... Maddie, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, look. Maddie, right here. Look. Maddie, look. Okay, get it. Find it. We'll find more, okay? Okay? Yeah, don't step on it. Let it, let it, let it be. Let's do a mushroom thing. We'll let you know if we find one. Update. Turtle. Hey, little guy. You've moved like five feet since the other day I saw you. What are you doing? Hmm? He doesn't want to talk. He thinks I'm a hideous beast. All right. Onto mushrooms. Dude, there's a fire over there. We'll, we'll figure it out, right? He's going slow enough that I think he'll feel the warmth. 